A new movie, The Apprentice, focuses, on, focuses rather on the early business career of former President Donald Trump and his relationship with his mentor, that would be Roy Cohn. Sebastian Stan portrays Trump in the 1970s and the 80s as he expands his empire. Jeremy Strong plays lawyer Roy Cohn, who was shown helping shape a young Donald Trump, you could say. In this clip, Roy Cohn coaches Trump as he's being interviewed on his car phone. Uh, yes, hello, Judy. Uh, this is Donald Trump. I'm very excited, very excited to talk to you. Be excited. Donald, now that the lawsuit uh, behind you, what do you want to do next? Uh, well, I intend to uh, acquire the Commodore, and uh, I'm planning on making it the, the best uh, and the finest building in, in the city, maybe, maybe the country, in the world. Judy, in the world, it's going to be the finest building in the world. It's going to be a spectacular hotel, absolutely spectacular, first class, and... Uh, that sounds very ambitious. Where do you get the drive? It's still so young, Donald. I got, I got flair, and I'm smart, so I, I think that's going to make me successful. But, but I also want to stay humble. Uh, sorry, Judy. Listen, uh, let's do the rest in person and uh, bring a photographer, okay? Oh, this movie's being called controversial. Why? For its portrayal of Donald Trump during his rise. The Trump campaign called the film pure malicious defamation, which, quote, sensationalizes lies that have long been debunked and they have threatened to sue to block its release after it premiered at the Cannes Film Festival. Well, as of today, we should tell you that lawsuit has not been filed. And we are very happy mm. to have Jeremy and Sebastian in the studio this morning. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Sebastian, I want to start with you because I would imagine I've heard that people tell you you should not do this, you right. shouldn't touch this project. Mm. They were concerned about you taking it on, and you thought what? You clearly proceeded to do it anyway. Yeah, it's usually uh, when, when I hear don't do it, I end up doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, But um, generally speaking, I think fear should motivate us to go into the storm, not run away from it. Hmm. I'm fascinated, Jeremy, by Roy Cohn and the way he, way he behaves. Early on in the movie, we learn that his mantra is Roy's, and he's saying this to Donald Trump, attack, 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 mm -hmm. deny, 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 never admit defeat. Mm -hmm. And some people yep. say that he still uses that in his playbook today. It gave me chills when I was watching that particular scene. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, th I think, in a way, that's what we learned from the film, is the influence, the malign influence that Roy Cohn had on Donald Trump. The movie's called The Apprentice, and it's about Donald Trump's apprenticeship under Roy Cohn. And yeah, Roy's sort of uh, dictum, always attack, deny everything, never admit defeat. He also believed and said that hate is a powerful weapon I bring out the worst in my enemies, and that's how I get them to destroy themselves. Hmm. So Roy Cohn's very long, dark shadow is sort of with us today, and I think it's very much the playbook yeah. uh, that, that we see still operating. But Jeremy, who is Roy Cohn, the, the person? What kind of jobs did he have before the Trump connection? So uh, people, the name is famous, and I don't think yeah. people know the biography. No, I mean, you know, Roy Cohn was a, was a highly influential, notorious, political fixer, lawyer. He was Joe McCarthy's chief counsel in the Senate Investigating Committee during the McCarthy uh, hearings. Wow. And then he became a New York kind of power broker. And he represented the Genovese crime family. He represented uh, uh, Aristotle Onassis. Hmm. He represented Cardinal Spellman, George Steinbrenner. Wow. You know, there was a whole array of, of of people he represented Donald so, Trump. Sebastian, uh, this is somewhat of an origin story for Donald mm -hmm. Trump, and you learn about who he was and how he became uh, the man he is. And depending on who you talk to, he can be described a thousand different ways. Mm -hmm. What was the most difficult thing about tapping in to that character? I think, I think obviously, everyone has such strong opinions, their own impressions of the guy, People are gonna come into the film with a lot of baggage, a lot of projections, mm. but I think trying to strip away all the noise and getting down to the basics, what, what is the emotional need, what is the drive, what was the potential of the man and where did it end up? How did it all mm. get to this today? Yeah. And I Hello. think there's still value in understanding that. Mm. Yeah, Jeremy, you know, the film seems to me extremely loaded and some say partisan, but you say it's not partisan. When I look at it, it, it seems very partisan to me, but you say, no, it's not partisan at all. What do you, what do you mean? Well, 
I think the intention of the film is to hold a mirror up to this person's life, this relationship, mm -hmm. and to show us in a way how Donald Trump was made, how he became the person that we know today, what his ideological and philosophical framework is and where it came from. And I think we in this country tend to have a kind of historical amnesia. And, you know, there's that famous thing that I'll, I'll probably botch, but that Churchill said in 1948 that those who fail to learn from the past are condemned to repeat it. Repeat it. So I think that this movie is both an opportunity to learn about the past, but learn from the past in this really historically unprecedented election. How do you describe this, the timing, though, Sebastian? That's why people say it's partisan. Depending on your point of view, some people say, yeah, I get it out there, and other people say, no, this should not come out. How do you say about the timing of this? Serendipitous, movie? really, because really? like I said, we, I didn't know if this movie was ever gonna get made. It started about three times, fell apart every mm -hmm. time. Then we, we finished shooting it January 31st. It was about three months for our director, Ali Bassi, to get the movie to Cannes. We didn't know it was even gonna come out. So the fact that we're here feels as if it was meant to be, right? I mean, but I, I, think, I think the film's about trust. I think, I think we have an opportunity to look at these people and genuinely ask ourselves, do we trust them? Can we use our human instinct rather than what we're being told to think, feel, uh, and understand? Can we, come, can we use our instinct to, to, to trust these people as we're going forward into the future? Do you, do you understand the controversy around it? Or, or do you, as people who know the story and, and, and put it on screen, do you think this just is an opportunity to humanize and maybe some people even might be sympathetic? I, I mean, I think we knew that we're playing with fire, you know, making a film like this coming out in the context that it's coming out in. But, you know, the, 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 the role of cinema and art in general is to hold a mirror up to nature and, and to show us ourselves. Mm. So, you know, I don't think we were afraid of doing it. It feels necessary. Yeah. I also think, I personally think it's like essential viewing. Well, for people, everyone people will have feelings. Well, Sebastian and Stan and Jeremy Strong, yeah. thank you so much. The Apprentice is in exclusive theaters this Friday, October 11th.